How to market in the modern day? The technological world is always shifting and changing, meaning that nothing is ever up to date for very long. The same can be said for the world of marking, and indeed, the entire philosophy of it too. When you hear the word marketing, what do you think? Do you think about advertising only? Or do you see it as something larger, something wider reaching? If you automatically jump towards the advertising side of the coin, you're not alone. The two terms have been used so interchangeably for decades, and many people actually mistake them for the same things. They're not however, they're subtly different. In the modern business age, simple advertising no longer works. If it has any impact, it's very minimal. These days, we need a more complicated, in-depth, and connected way to market goods and services, to put a business on the fast track towards growth and success. We need to think more philosophically in so many ways. The online world doesn't prescribe to huge advertising campaigns. Back in the day, huge marketing campaigns made sense and they worked. These days, they don't. We live in technological times and everything is done online. Think back to 1960, if you can. Pretend you're a marketing department manager, and you're attempting to find the best way to market your product. The sales department are telling you that sales aren't good enough, and it's up to you to do something about it. How? The old-fashioned way would be to advertise in a bigger and more far-reaching way, and get your adverts out to as many people as humanly possible. In many ways this is what Cola Cola have done for decades. You often can't move without seeing some kind of advert for the soft drink. Their way of thinking is to go for the masses. Soak the market with your message and make everyone think that everybody else is loving Coca-Cola, so they should be too. You could opt to use the TV, but times have changed. We no longer have just three or four channels as we did back in the 60s and 70s, we now have countless channels available via cable and we also have streaming internet services too. Using the TV to reach the masses isn't as effective as it once was. For instance, the show Mad Men aired in the US for eight years from 2007, and was hugely popular. Despite that only 1% of people in the USA actually tuned in. Using the online world is really where it's at. It has two sides however, firstly, the internet is the largest media outlet on the planet, and it connects billions of people across the world. On the other hand, it's so large and everyone uses it in different ways, that people seem to have their own private version. Reaching masses isn't that easy with the internet either, despite its size. The old-fashioned massive advertising route doesn't work as well as it once did, and it's time for a different tact. Advertising online is useful, but there are limitations. When you first think about the internet, you would assume that it is the ideal place to advertise. It's true in many ways. You can reach the people you want to reach, and target them via the mediums they use, e.g. social media platforms, YouTube, etc. Unlike the old TV channels, when you had to send your advertising method out to everyone and hope that the select few you were trying to target picked it up, with the internet, you can be more choosy and therefore be more effective and streamlined. You can choose your demographic and reach them far easier. The other plus point. Timing. TV channels broadcast at certain times, the internet doesn't have a time schedule, it runs 24-7, from anywhere in the world. Another benefit is the ability to be able to measure how you're doing, e.g. using metrics to be able to assess your performance. Oh, how the marketing departments of the past would have loved to be able to do that. The ability to measure performance means you can see what works, what doesn't, and you can set your budget accordingly. Saved time and saved cash. The downside? You're not the only ones who can use the internet in this way, absolutely everyone can. This means that when you connect to the internet, you're instantly hit with several adverts straight away. It's annoying, and most people will simply ignore them, just like we used to with old-fashioned flyers that were posted through our doors. With this in mind, something else comes to your rescue, SEO, or search engine optimization. By knowing what SEO is and how to use it, making the right use of the right keywords, it's likely that your website will end up at the top of the Google search results page. Let's face it, nobody goes past the first page or possibly even two when they search for something on Google, and you need to be at the top to be noticed. The good news is that this isn't as difficult as it may first sound, and with the right advice, any business can optimize its online presence. Make a human connection to help buyers identify with your product, service. The first thing you need to do when putting together the best marketing strategy is to actually make the product or service you have attractive and worth having to customers. 
Surely that's easy, not necessarily. You might think that it's the job of the designers to make a product worth having, and in some ways yes, that's true, but it's also the job of the marketing department to make people understand how and why. To help you understand this point, let's talk about what makes a product or service actually worth it. To highlight this point, imagine a tool, a drill, and it has a one-quarter bit. A person buying this drill will do so because they specifically want a one-quarter bit. Nobody is simply going to buy this type of drill for no reason. That also means that they want the one-quarter bit to make a hole that specific size, e.g. they want to drill a hole in their living room or kitchen, etc., and they need the hole to be that size so they can hang a picture or a cupboard. This in effect makes your home look more clean and organized. Why do you want your home to look clean and organized? Because it helps you feel in control of your home and the space around you. It helps you feel more organized in yourself, and it basically looks good. This means, when you break it down, it's not the drill bit you really want, it's the feeling of control and the admiration of those who visit your home and see your new cupboard hanging on the wall. In this case, the drill and the one-quarter bit are just tools to help you reach that goal. Can you see what we are getting at? Marketing needs to first identify what people want and need, tapping into emotions and aspirations. A person is going to feel that a product is worth having if it solves an issue they have, e.g. to keep the home tidy. Another good example here is to think about a car, specifically an SUV. Picture a man who wants to buy this SUV. Why does he want to purchase that particular car? It could be because it will help him to travel over different terrains, e.g. off-roading. The thing is, maybe he will never go off-road. The fact that car has the capability is all he needs to convince him that he wants it. It taps into his desire for more adventure in his life, to own a car that lets him do whatever he wants, and go wherever he wants. In this case, the SUV reaches out to the emotions and desires of that man. As you can see, quality marketing is born at the point where the product is designed, and then the marketing process needs to identify and speak to people on an emotional level, giving them reasons that are not only irresistible and exciting but also giving promises that can be delivered. Effective marketing means having the same idea as your customers, but also being open to future changes. Remember, in life, no matter what you're doing, you cannot please every single person. It is impossible. The reason for this is because every person on the planet wants something subtly different. Even if two people want the same thing, their view of it might be slightly different. A good example of this is to picture the word travel. To some this means going off on a backpacking adventure, but to others, it means a simple beach break. The product or service you're trying to market holds a definition of what it is supposed to solve, e.g. the desire of the target customer. What you need to make sure is that your target customers have the same definition as you, otherwise you're on different pages. You should then work to cut down your target audience, to ensure you have a more focused approach. To do that, you should cut your audience into two different teams. Those who adopt change those who resist change. Those who adopt change like new things. For example, when the latest Apple product is released, adopters will head to the Apple store in their masses. On the other hand, those who resist change prefer to stick to what they're used to. These people will avoid the latest technology and use what they feel safe with, e.g. older models. Those who resist change often eventually become those who adopt change, but it takes them longer. They don't seek out change like a natural adopter will. In order to use effective marketing, you need to sell your product to each group in a slightly different way. Those who adopt change are easier to persuade and market your product to. They will happily try out your product. On the other hand, those who are resistant to change will be much harder to convince. By asking them to try your product you're actually encouraging them to shun what they feel safe with and opt for something different. You need to do this in a way which makes them feel safe with your product too. In this case, it's best to first market to the ones who adopt change, and then tackle the resistant ones later. Identify your target customers by sticking to your values, but using a different position. We have already mentioned that decisions on whether or not to buy a product or service are down to whether emotions and desires are satisfied. There is another area to consider however, the values of a specific person. This means that you also need to take into account the things which your potential customers actually care about. A good example is someone who is shopping for food. In that case she is looking after her nutritional needs. She heads to the aisle with the chips and she browses the range on offer. 
Now, if how popular a product is forms part of her personal values, she'll probably opt for the most expensive brand choice. On the other hand, if she is more concerned with budgeting, she will go for the cheaper choice. If she cares a lot about health and wellness, she might go for the low-fat option instead. In this case, her purchasing decision is based on her personal values, i.e. what is important to her. For every value you can think of, there is an opposite, and these two opposites give you the two extremes. For instance, you have thriftiness and luxury, a casual attitude and a professional attitude, dependability and an element of risks. These are polar opposites, but sit within one subject. In marketing, finding the middle ground between the spectrum is where the profit will be discovered. However, this is also where you will find competition, because these safe areas are where most companies tend to target their marketing efforts. This makes marketing even harder for new businesses. For that reason, the best route towards effective marketing in this case is to look at the areas which aren't yet flooded with competition. This could mean going a little more towards one extreme than the other, and then changing your marketing tack to the other side of the spectrum. This would give you a combination of the extremes and therefore target both sides of the market. A good example of this is to look towards the music industry. Between 1965 and 1995, the Grateful Dead became one of the most successful bands in rock music history commercially. However, when you look at the statistics, they actually only had one big billboard chart hit during this time. What they did to become commercially popular is to sell themselves to both ends of the musical spectrum. They gave the organic music fans what they wanted, with raw instrumentals at their performances, but they also gave the radio fans what they wanted too, with smooth and professionals albums and songs which were designed for radio play. So, although the Grateful Dead only had one big hit on the charts, they actually hit more than $450 million in record sales, thanks to their clever marketing tact. You basically need to create your own group of loyal and faithful fans, just like the Grateful Dead did.